Hi, everybody. I'm Jordan Elizabeth Gelber with Bull TV. Today, I have my good friend Cynthia Frenzy, financial coach with Millionaire Within. As a millennial, I really need to be focusing on my financial future. Uh, I think we get so stuck in these moments of I need, I need, I need. We keep forgetting how to put stuff away for what's going to happen next. Because one day I'm going to want bigger things like a bigger apartment or I'm going to yeah. want, uh, you know, a house or I'm going to want to be able to buy like a car or something like that or just save for my future children. Um, can you tell us a little about uh, financial literacy and why people should find out more about it? So the one thing I want to say is I think it's amazing that the X, Y, or Y, Z, or whatever generation it is, is focused on this. Because when I was young, we didn't talk about this stuff. It was like, what are we doing tomorrow? What's happening Friday? That's all that we've lived by. And to see that this younger generation is so entrenched in investing and in getting there and what the internet has brought, I think it's brilliant. And I love it. I was uh, skiing the other day and I was, there was a group of 20 year olds. They were like 19, 20, 21 talking about all their stock investments. And I, I just think it's brilliant. So I, um, I commend the generations who want to learn this. Um, and it's so important, especially because my generation and the baby boomers, they're older than me, um, have screwed things up so bad. So no one expected us to live so long. Now we're living longer. And now everybody that's, you know, in the, I think I'm the, I don't know what generation I am, but whatever I am and the baby boomers above me, we literally didn't expect to live so long. And we started so much later, especially the baby boomers. We have people from the greatest generation, which is the depression era generation that are still alive today. So okay. we have to prepare for the future. And I think it's brilliant. I think it's, it's great that financial literacy is becoming so much on the forefront because back in the day, it was really just for the wealthy to get richer. And now the hard work and beginner is starting to figure this out. And I, I couldn't be happier. I mean, it's great. There's, there's so much out there, especially right now with what happened in the past year, really learning about the opportunities for you to be prepared for any sort of uh, emergency. I think it, it's really impressive when you see people really focus on what's going to happen in the next year, five years, three years, or two months. Why do you think it's so important for the Gen Z and millennials to really focus on investing? I think they need to focus on investing for exactly what we just talked about, because tomorrow's going to be here before we know it. We're in a very, in my opinion, short window of time right now. We have no idea. No one expected last week to happen with GameStop and Reddit and all of that. No one saw that coming except the people who made it happen. Um, and in an instant, life can change because no one saw the pandemic hitting the way it did. I mean, we have 900,000 people filing for unemployment a week. We have stock markets higher than ever before, interest rates lower than they've ever been in history. Something big's going to happen. And take advantage of these moments, take advantage of them safely, smartly, but be prepared. And that's the key because in an instant, it can all be gone. So the investing side is not just about making a quick buck. It's about being prepared because the next thing that's coming that will happen, I don't know if it's a crash or a boom or a, another pandemic or a continuation or uh, if, if God knows what in politics, whatever it's going to be, we need to be financially prepared for that. We can't be left again with 400 bucks for emergency fund. That was the average when the pandemic hit that most people had. We can't be left in that situation again, because if we know anything, we know that the government is really not going to take care of us. They'll throw us a bone, 600 bucks here, thousand bucks there. But I really, can anybody live on that? And where's that money coming from later? The other key is, is not just investing for today, but it's preparing tax wise for tomorrow. So we have to invest wisely today with the tax um, knowledge for tomorrow as well. So we have not only money for a rainy day, but how about a tax-free retirement? Okay. So you said multiple times about being prepared, right? So let's say someone like me, that I've never known anything about it. How can I even get started? How can I start preparing now in a time where it seems like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like jobs are opening, jobs are closing. Things are starting. They're, they're, they're not even able to begin. So how can we prepare now at a time like this? So the biggest thing that we have to prepare for is, in my opinion, start with $1. Okay. 
you know, have enough money coming in to cover your bills. So if you don't have a job, find some income. You got to have income. You can't do anything without income. So hopefully that's the case for everybody listening, that at least they have income. All of that income, if you are paycheck to paycheck, start with a dollar. Just throw a dollar into savings. Saving is a habit, so is spending. And we've talked about this many, many times. So start saving a dollar. Put that dollar away. Add it up. At the end of the year, yeah, you know what? If it's a dollar a week, you got 52 bucks. But it's more than you had at zero or negative. You got to get out of debt. You got to get out of debt. Cut frivolous spending while you're not prepared for the future. Go through all your income outgo. You got to know all this. This is what I do for a living. And this is what I do for free is get people on a budget. They get advantage, take advantage of a free analysis to find out where you are today. It's like anything. If I want to drive to California, I got to know where I'm starting. You know, if you go to the airport and buy a plane ticket and say, I want to go to California, they need to know where you're flying out of. So with your finances, if I want to buy a house, we need to know where you're starting. Everything is about the starting point, And that's what we do at my company. What options are there for people to start investing? What kind of things can we start investing? And in? obviously, you know, there's stocks and things like that, but there, what other options do we have available to us? So if we're going to play in the stock market, have fun, go there, do your research, have fun, get a place. Everybody's cheap these days to trade in Ameritrade, Schwab, all these companies that have been around for decades. Everybody's doing it for almost no money per trade. Pick one of the ones that have been around a long time, not one of the ones that are fly-by app because we don't know where they're going to be tomorrow and they like to change the rules on people. But for your long-term savings, you need somebody like me that's going to deal with the long-term, teach you how to do it. Because again, what's going to work today is not going to work forever and taxes are never going away and they're going to get worse. You got to be prepared. Let's take a little segue for a second to taxes. I think a big topic right now, it's tax season. And a lot of people are in unemployment last year. And a lot of unemployment people are still in unemployment this year. How is that going to affect people's taxes who have unfortunately been unemployment for so long? Well, that's a great question. And this is where the lack of education comes in. And this is what makes me um, really just cringe because people just don't know what they don't know. If you took your unemployment and did not take tax deductions, like where they withheld taxes and you had no other income coming in that did withhold taxes, you're going to have a tax bill at the end of the year. Now, in my professional opinion, that's not a bad thing. I'm a self-employed person. I love paying the IRS. I would personally rather pay them than them hold my money and give it back to me. Because if they're holding my money for 12 months and giving it back to me, I didn't earn any interest. I couldn't invest it. I couldn't do anything. And they didn't pay me any interest. So I'm a big fan. If you got to pay them a few bucks or break even, that's a good thing. That's a goal. But if you're not prepared for it because you didn't save that money in a separate account to give to them, well, you're going to have a big awakening when the taxes come and that bill comes and now you got to pay. So for those out there who don't know the basic fundamentals, because like you said, they're not teaching it. What are three just quick takeaways that people listening now could could get, like three basic fundamentals that they could say, all right, I, I learned one thing today. I learned these three things about the basic fundamentals. One, saving is a habit and so is spending. So if you think you can't, you can start with a dollar. Number two, getting a tax refund is not a good thing because the IRS just used your money for an entire year and paid you zero interest. And the value is actually less because there's something called inflation. The IRS and the government prove they suck at money. So you keep your money. And number three, start learning how to save, not just for today, but for long-term, because long-term will be here before you know it, and you're going to wish you knew the rules. Well, I think that's such valuable information, and I'm so happy we got to talk to you about this. Uh, To find out more information, people can find you at Find Your Millionaire Within, which is, what's your website again? FindYourMW.com. Great. I look forward to talking to you more about my future investments. And thank you so much. And this is Jordan Gelber with Bold TV. 